going to get started. We have a little bit of content to go through, and then I want to make sure that we have plenty of time to answer any and all of your questions, because this is supposed to be a mastermind where we're answering your questions. We're helping you be more empowered to utilize video marketing, whether it be for your business or for like Marco's case, he's, you know, a videographer himself. And so what can he do in order to help people that he's working with? And so once again, throughout the time, feel free just to post your questions in the chat. And so really what we're going to be doing today is going over the social media distribution roadmap, as well as the three videos that you should be producing. And then of course, answering your questions. And so the video marketing roadmap, step one is always actually creating that video. That is always going to be step one. And then it doesn't matter if you're a B2B, a B2C, uh, it doesn't matter what your business is, you absolutely want to be putting your videos onto YouTube. And the reason for that is that YouTube is the number two used search engine next to Google, which is number one. And Google has owned YouTube since 2008. And so that means that you know Google wants to see videos and so whenever you have videos on YouTube and you fully search engine optimize them you're going to have a better chance to get organically found whether it is how to contour my face correctly in makeup to how to look good on video people are always looking for answers online and in addition to being a search engine YouTube is the second most visited website worldwide and so so everyone is on YouTube and you want to make sure that you are spending time producing a video and then getting it fully search engine optimized on YouTube. When you spend the time to fully search engine optimize, you're going to be able to utilize those links on Pinterest, Patreon, if you have a membership site, Twitter, and you can also utilize playlist links to post to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a place where all B2B businesses need to be posting. We are on all of these accounts. However, the social media account that we actually get new clients through is LinkedIn. And so you really do want to focus some time on posting on LinkedIn, both organically as well as sharing your YouTube playlists. Number three is Facebook, and Facebook is primarily going to be for people who are B2C, business to consumer models. So if you're selling makeup, purses, um, pet care products, those are all going to be really great to post on Facebook. Facebook is also being an older demographic these days. You're looking at more of a 25 to 55 year old demographic. And so if you're talking about parenting or, or anything having to do with kids, that's going to be a really great site to focus on, but you always want to make sure that you are organically posting to that account. You never want to share a YouTube link. That's why they live on opposite sides of this town is because Facebook and YouTube are in competition with each other. And so you want to make sure that you are directly uploading to Facebook every single time. Then we have Instagram. Instagram we know is owned by Facebook and Instagram it's a still slightly younger demographic, but it is getting older. And so you're looking more at the 18 to 35 year old demographic and still more B to C business to consumer. And so if you are someone who is looking to market to 18 to 35 year olds, you may want to focus on Instagram where you can upload a 60 second or less video, or if it's more than a minute, you could utilize IGTV. Instagram TV will allow you to have up to one hour and that first 60 seconds is going to be shown as a preview on Instagram. And so it's extremely important that you make sure those first 60 seconds are interesting. And really, you want to make also your first 15 seconds interesting because you can then take those first 15 seconds as an Instagram story. Now, Instagram story is Instagram and Facebook's competition to the TikTok. Yes, I'm going to say the TikTok. <laughs> TikTok is in its own little ship right now. Um, it's about you know two and a half years old, but really started booming last year with the pandemic. People were looking for new content. And if you are marketing to teenagers, so anyone between the ages of really 10 to 18, you really need to consider going on TikTok. We have been quite amazed at the statistics of how 
uh, valuable TikTok has been to companies who are, are having those target demographics. They found last year that 60% of TikTok users basically convinced their parents to purchase something, uh, a product or brand that they saw on TikTok. And so TikTok's a great way to build trust. You don't have to overproduce your videos. So speaking of producing videos, what are the three types of videos that every single business should be producing? Number one, our testimonials and review videos, third-party validation. Third-party validation is so important. Word of mouth is one of the oldest forms of marketing. However, it's still one of the most valuable. People will take a five-star review as if they heard it from their own friend or family member. And so you really want to make sure to keep your ears open when you're getting praise and make sure to get those testimonials. And now you might be thinking, oh, I know I have a lot of great clients who absolutely love what I have to say. I need to get those testimonials. Well, please take a screenshot right now. This is your script to your testimonials. And you can either have it as an interview when you're talking with them. Um, you know, if they're outside of state lines or you can't get together in person still, utilize Zoom, put it on a gallery view, have yourselves side by side and have this little interview. Ask these questions, but make sure that the person restates the question within the answer and have them tell a story. Who are they? How did you first get started working together? Why did you decide to start working together? And, you know, what was the process like? Discuss any tangibles in detail. So if you're a real estate agent, for example, and you help someone sell their home and, you know, two days after hitting the MLS, that's a really good tangible result or if you help them earn X more dollars or help them uh, feel more confidence, anything that someone can see themselves also obtaining, you want to go ahead and make sure that you have that stated. Now, if someone is extremely busy, maybe they're just walking out of your store, walking out of your office, but are giving you some praise and you really want to capture their testimonial, you want to make sure that you're at least capturing this last question. Would you recommend the same service uh, person or business and why? And you want to make sure that they not only state that they would recommend, but they would recommend your name or your product or your business and then continue on why. That one sentence alone can be testimonial gold for you, especially if it is a nice soundbite. You can then leverage it across all the social media accounts as well as your website, and it's really going to help your third-party validation. The second type of video that you really want to consider producing are subject matter expert videos. And it's actually search and subject matter expert videos. That's the additional S's for. And so SSME videos. And what those can be is really any type of video that is proving you are a, a subject matter expert. And it's also going to help with your search results. Remember, YouTube is a search engine, not just a social media account. And so we want to get organically found before spending any Google ad money, before spending any Facebook ad money. We want to have our perfect uh, target demographics find us naturally. And so think about what's on your FAQs. Or if you don't have an FAQs page, what are you starting to get hand cramps, retyping, or you're feeling like a broken record just repeating to your clients? Whenever you get a question, write that down because probably other people have that same question. They just may not be asking it. And so I personally have a Google Doc where anytime I get a question from a client, I will copy it and I'll put it onto that Google Doc. And that Google Doc is my scripting guide. So whenever I am doing videos, I can just look at that guide and then choose some topics to do a video on. Are there any definitions that are just known in your industry, but maybe not so commonly known? I know for us, B-roll. I'll talk about B-roll. You know, we're going to get your voice over and add some B-roll. And people go, what in the world is B-roll? Well, that means I need to do a video on that. And so what are some definitions or common phrases you use in your industry that the common person may not know about and you should create a video around it? That's really great also for the search aspect because people might be searching, what is escrow? What does that mean? And then you could have a video showing that you know what it means and that you are the expert that should be trusted to work with.
What's seasonal, especially as there's different holidays? What are some things that you can do around that holidays and around your industry? And what's trending? You also want to, like, the world wants to know that you have an idea of what's going on. And so you also have the opportunity to discuss some trending topics that may still fit around your overall industry. And last, but far from least, <laughs> is your introduction video. You should focus on having an introduction video, which would be your first impression video. And so this is going to be something you can add to your email signature. You can add it to your website, add it to your LinkedIn profile, pin to the top of your Facebook business page, and just sprinkle all over the place so people get to know you. So how do you write an introduction video now? Here's the scripting. And the key is to try to write all of these questions using only one sentence. So Elizabeth's gonna drop into the chat if she hasn't already, the great eight document. So that way you can utilize uh, the scripting worksheet. And you first wanna answer, what problem does your offering solve? People are online looking for solutions. So go ahead and right in the beginning, share really what do you do? And then who are you and what's your business name? Who is your target audience? How are you different from your competition or what makes you unique? And now I'm not saying to, to bad mouth and say we're better than XYZ company down the street because. No, instead, really talk about what makes you unique as a whole. Do you do something that's different than anyone else? Do you do something that really sets you beyond your competition and discuss that aspect? And then what resistance or objections will people have? Whenever you're in those initial sales meetings, do you regularly hear, ah, it might be too expensive, or uh, it might be too timely, or I'm not sure this is really going to work? What are some of those phrases that people typically tell you that you can just, in this introduction video, bring it down and explain to them why it shouldn't be an objection? And then the very last thing, and really you need to have this in every single video you produce, is your call to action. When, where, and how do you want people to take action? If you have a free ebook on your website, then say, go to my website, download my free ebook. Let's say you prefer people just to pick up the phone and call you or text you, then say that. Other people don't want to give out their phone number. So really think, what is unique to you? What is it? How do you want people to connect with you? And then if you can add an actual real video testimonial to this introduction video, that's going to be gold for you. Because not only will people get to know you, they're also going to get that third party validation. So I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of a great eight like video setup that you can see that when, oh, one second, that when you actually utilize one sentence, you see that says a minute seven, and there's actually an exit graphic at the end of there. And so I don't have a testimonial in here, so a little asterisk on that, but you're gonna be able to see how when you answer everything utilizing only one sentence, that you can get a video to be an introduction video with a minute or less. So let's just take a listen to this really quick. At Financial Potion, we provide at Financial Potion, we provide customized video marketing solutions to businesses and entrepreneurs. People don't retain information that they read and hear, and there's so much noise in the world. However, our solutions help you stand out from the crowd. We offer complimentary strategy sessions. We're reliable, and we always work hard to get 100% satisfaction. If you're someone who wants to grow their business, who wants to sell more products, get more clients, and educate and entertain your current clients, we're here to help. Since 2009, we've been working professionally in Arizona in the field of video marketing. Unlike most production companies that will produce a video and wish you good luck, we're here to make sure you don't collect digital dust through our social media distribution management and training services. Some people feel they can't afford video marketing. However, with our customized solutions, we can cater to almost any budget. So if you're ready to take the next step and be more successful with video marketing, connect with us for your complimentary strategy session by giving us a call or sending us an email. We look forward to helping you.
Now that was with our old logo and our old branding on there, but you can still get an idea for if you answer your questions just utilizing one sentence. So it's about getting really crystal clear with what you have to say um, that you can accomplish creating a great eight uh, introduction script in one minute or less. So at this point now, what we're going to be do is we're going to be having some fun together before I just start answering all of your questions that you have. Uh, what Elizabeth is going to be doing is that we're going to be setting you up into breakout rooms. And what we're going to be doing is having you go through your great eight with each other. And I want you to critique each other and help each other grow. And so we're only going to spend maybe about five minutes doing this. Um, once again, have one person, we're gonna put you in groups of two. And so have one person go first and then have the other person go second and then give each other a critique of any questions you might have still from that, that grade eight um, or what you would suggest them to expand on or maybe trim up on. And so does anyone have any questions with the breakout rooms before we put you into the breakout rooms? Yes, Marco, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask that question, please. Yeah, I'm a little confused about what you want us to go over. You said the grade eight. I'm, I mean, For some I mean, reason, my speakers are still not working. One second. Oh, I see. Oh, never mind. I mean, it's the uh, it's the text. I see. You got it now. Never mind. Marco, go ahead and talk to me again. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you now. For some reason, my headphones died, but I can use my larger speakers. All right. No, I think I know we talked. I was I had a question about the grade eight, but I see the script, so I think we're good. Yes. So make sure that you download the script that is in the chat box. Elizabeth just shared that. And then we're going to put each other into groups to then go through it. And then after that, it's all you. It's all answering your questions. So let's go ahead. We're going to go into those breakout rooms and get to know each other a little bit more, help each other grow more. And then we'll go ahead and jump right into the mastermind section and answer all your questions. Great. So whenever you are ready, Elizabeth, let's go ahead and break them up. If you are having a great connection with whomever you had a breakout session with, make sure you continue that conversation. Go ahead and in the chat, share your name, your contact information, and schedule a one-to-one -to -one together. We want to build this community. We want to help each other out. And so make sure you stay connected. But now is the time to answer all your questions. So what questions, it could be anything, it could be anything that we discussed, anything that we did not discuss, anything around the world of video marketing, what do you want to know? Don't be shy, feel free to either put it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask. Hey Taylor, it's Stacy. can you hear me? Yes. I have a question about Rumble. Is that like YouTube? Rumble, Rumble, that sounds familiar. I don't know why I'm not thinking of it right now. Um, Someone said there's an app where you can upload videos and they said it's like YouTube. And I thought they said it was Rumble. So I just wanted I want to, to get your opinion. For, okay, yeah, it's it's a Android and iOS based um, system. So um, I honestly have not used Rumble too much myself. We've really just been trying to get more into the TikTok since we've been seeing it being very, really great for some clients of ours. Um, one in particular, Tulsa Welding School, it has quickly became their number one site for interaction. And their whole target demographic is high schoolers. They want straight out of high school for people to go and you know join their courses and get a degree in welding. And TikTok has definitely been um, the one to go to. Now, Rumble, it's possible Rumble could be the new TikTok this year or next year. Um, it's just one that I have not personally gone through yet. You know, TikTok, like I said, is about two and a half years old and it really took last year to, to actually get out there. Um, so something maybe to keep on the radar, but nothing that I have heard anyone talk about. <laughs> so okay, if I were you. to put my energy and focus in something, and especially if that was you, you know, anyone who also wants to learn how to put on makeup, who needs makeup, uh, Stacy Steele is a great contact. She helped me put my makeup on for my wedding. Um, so really a wonderful person and has great products and really will help you figure out what's the best for you and your skin tone. Uh, I think TikTok would be such a great platform for you. Um, the younger demographics, you know, they, they care about makeup, they care about appearances, you know, uh, Instagram would also still be a really great platform for you maybe rumble eventually but that has you know i've definitely heard a lot more about the use of clubhouse which is not 
uh, video based. That's actually all audio based. Um, but I've definitely been hearing a lot more traction with Clubhouse than you know this Rumble so far. Okay, thank Great you. Question. What kind of traction are you getting from through Clubhouse? Because I've gone to a couple of Clubhouse meetings. Uh, these filmmakers do like a little thing every Monday, and uh, yeah, it seems like it's people are still trying to figure out what to do with it. Yeah, I think it's going to be kind of like TikTok too, where you know. I remember I actually had a TikTok account like two and a half years ago when it first came out. I saw it on Google Trends that it was like the number one trending downloaded app. I gave it a shot. I thought this is just for kids to have fun with dancing and I, I left it alone. But now you could see that, you know, you can do sponsored ads on there. Now it has gotten a lot more robust uh, and it's possible that Clubhouse can be the same. You know, at the moment, it's still an invite only. So it kind of gives it that little bit of like, exclusivity feel which people like uh, it is all audio based since they wanted to have something different from the video based thinking that people are getting zoom fatigue uh, and i put it in quotes because i don't know how you can get zoom fatigue personally but maybe i just uh, get comfortable in front of the camera <laughs> and so um clubhouse it, it's something that we want to keep an eye on that we want to be aware of as you know marketers but uh, you know i still haven't seeked out for my invite or anything like that All right, other questions. And it can be from, like I said, scripting, producing, editing, the distribution of it. Well, I have a question for everyone here. Uh, share it in the chat or share it out loud. Hey, Who here is utilizing YouTube regularly? Who has a YouTube channel? You can just simply say I do or yes or no. <laughs> or kind of, if you don't post to it regularly, who actually has a YouTube channel? I, I do have a YouTube channel. It's kind of specific for a, a TV series that I'm trying to get produced. Mm -hmm. um, it's, got a lot, it's got a lot of subscribers, like it's Ooh. got a lot, but I don't know what to do with it really because it's really based on that particular series that I'm producing uh, and I'm trying to get one. I have a personal YouTube page that doesn't have as many subscribers and, that, and mm -hmm. I'd like to use that for my own stuff, but I'm kind of feel like I want to use the other page that has more subscribers. So it's been kind of like weird. <laughs> yeah, for yourself, when you do have, you know, two different businesses or two different, you know, um, projects like that, I would have a project specific channel. And then what you'd want to do is on your channel, make sure that you have a playlist that's linking back to that other channel. So your playlist could be like, um, like projects or, you know, things that you've worked on at my work example, uh, samples, and then you would make sure that you would have some video links in that playlist to that other channel. So then that way they communicate with each other. All right. And then so question that came into the chat, can you offer video services to help me virtually? Yes, so we have we are in Mesa, Arizona, although we have clients across the United States. And so how we have helped people virtually is by getting on Zoom for one option and actually recording a Zoom conversation and a Zoom interview. We utilize Zoom to do some um, a live award shows that we recorded their, you know, awardees. Um, we've used it to create introduction videos for people who were across different states. Uh, so you could definitely utilize a system like Zoom to record. Uh, we have a couple of clients that do regular podcast interviews that we then take that footage, edit it up to have the full episode, have little teaser clips for social media, and then just an audio only version for the podcast. Um, but then we've also done things where we'll just go full animation. Maybe we'll just get a voiceover from you, or we hire a voiceover artist, and then we do everything utilizing graphics and animation. And so the beauty of video is that there's a lot of different options. You don't have to just only do talking heads or only do animation. Really think about how am I gonna get my message across? And how does my target audience wanna learn? People of an older demographic um, can take a little bit longer. You can go slower, you can explain a little bit more. Your videos can be five, 10, 15 minutes long if need be. But if you have a younger demographic, you need to make it maybe a little more flashier uh, and a lot shorter. So really when you're thinking about how to produce your videos, it's how would my target audience want to see it produced? And then from there, there's always options. Great question. All right. 
So it looks like a lot of people do have a YouTube channel. Yeah, and also, question. if you want to get a complimentary YouTube audit, uh, we do provide that here at Financial Potion. And so just share us the uh, link to your channel. We will then go through and highlight what you're doing really well and some areas that you might want to focus on for search engine optimization. Because remember, YouTube is not a social media account. It is a search engine. And so we want to make sure that we have the best chance to get organically found. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you said send you what? Awesome, Stacy. I'll definitely get you another video assessment. <laughs> I hope you've been posting regularly because you definitely have tons of content that you can post about, especially like how to look good on a Zoom video. Like I can already see some shine on my face. I probably should have powdered that up a little bit. There can be a whole series on that because although we're getting out of the pandemic, um, I'm still seeing a lot of our clients saying they're going to have a hybrid option. Uh, they've had higher attendees on some of the events just because people don't have to worry about traveling. And so although we will be going back in person, we're still going to be online too. And so it's still going to be important that you know how to look good in person and on camera. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Any other questions? Just taking a quick note there. Okay, so who then, what other platforms do you use? So I had everyone here that said that you do have a YouTube channel. What's your second most used platform and why? You already heard for us that it's LinkedIn and that's because LinkedIn is a B2B platform, business to business. And although in video marketing, yeah, sure, I could do weddings and things of that sort, but that's not what we do. We really focus on the business and that's where LinkedIn has been an excellent platform. So what has been another good platform for you? mostly videos on Facebook. That makes sense, you know, because Facebook is B to C. Just make sure when you're utilizing Facebook that you're always directly uploading the videos to Facebook because those algorithms are freaky smart. Um, don't use Buffer, don't use Hoopsuite, don't use any of those third-party schedulers because Facebook will know it. And you can do a side-by-side -side comparison if you want. Post a video, directly to Facebook, post that same video using a scheduler, and you'll see that you're going to get so many more views and engagement when you actually organically post the video to Facebook. Um, let's see here, Instagram and Instagram stories. Yep, definitely. Instagram's all about the visual. Uh, just started the TikTok account for my next project, martial arts movie. That's very cool. And I'm working with a career counselor and I've been using LinkedIn much more. Yeah, so it might be one of those things too that, you know, for some products that you have, you might want to focus on one platform. For some projects you have, you might need to focus on another platform. It really depends on what you're selling and what you're sharing. All right, let's talk also about these platforms, about Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in, uh, in particular, and LinkedIn actually. 80% of the users on those particular accounts are watching videos on silent. And so if you're posting videos onto those accounts, you absolutely need to make sure that those videos are having some large text graphics and perhaps even full closed captions because people are going onto those accounts, they're going through the wall, it's auto playing, the video is just going to start auto playing, and then they're going to choose whether to click on the video and actually fully watch it. And so you need to make sure that when you're posting to those accounts that you do have closed captions in there. And so some people might go, okay, well then how do I, how do I get closed captions on there? There's a couple of options. Number one is just straight up edit them into the actual video. You can have them hard coded in the video. Adobe Premiere Pro actually has a tool that you can now get your captions fairly easily put on there. Um, and then you could also take an SRT file from YouTube. So one of our YouTube search engine optimization steps is to correct your closed captions. Then once they are corrected, you can download them. They'll download it as an, as an SRT file and you can then upload it to Facebook and LinkedIn. That will then hard code that closed caption onto the video without having to do any video editing. If you don't get the SRT file from YouTube, another option would be using rev.com, rev.com. And I personally use this site a lot whenever we have like an interview. 
any video longer than five minutes, I'm not going to spend the time to do the closed captions for. And so web.com, it's about $1.25 a minute, and that could give you an SRT file. Another option for your SRT file is if you already have a script written, save it as a text file, and then you can utilize this free tool, toolslick.com forward slash conversion forward slash subtitles forward slash text to SRT to get a free SRT to then upload to those accounts. Okay. Uh, other questions that we have. This is really was built to have, you know, for you all to answer questions, because I know I attend so many events where yeah, it's a lot of great content, 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 but then there's not enough time to get all your questions answered. So that's why we wanted to do this. Questions, questions. I know a question that we are regularly question? asked is how often should I post? And with that, I do say post at least once a week. And if you actually have quality content, feel free to go beyond that. And so at least once a week. And then if you do have quality content where you're not selling, but rather sharing, feel free to go to once a day or more. And Stacey, it looked like you unmuted yourself for a moment before I started talking. Um, I need to make training. Sorry, can you say that one more time? Hmm, it's breaking up quite a bit. Can you try saying that one more time or if not, put it in the chat? Can you hear me? Anyone else hearing? I know my speakers have been kind of wonky today. Can you hear a couple more things, Stacey? Can you guys hear me okay? Now, now, now I can. We, now we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, crazy. Okay, I posted a question in the chat. If I make training videos for my team, what's the best place to store them and access them to, to get them to, to the team? So are you looking to have these be private team only videos? Yeah, that'd be ideal. What I would advise then if you want to create um, like a training series that you'd only share with a particular group of people or a team is you could still utilize YouTube since YouTube is free and then just make a playlist that's unlisted. And so whenever you're uploading to YouTube, you have an option of keep it public. That means anyone can find it, anyone can see it. Unlisted means that only people who have the URL link or wherever you embed the video, those are the only places that are going to see it. And so you could create that unlisted playlist that you then share that unlisted playlist link with the team. Um, you don't want to do private just because private then um, you only share the link through YouTube. And I've noticed it's been a little more difficult for less tech savvy people to access. And so if you want to keep it private and inexpensive, I would utilize YouTube. Um, Vimeo is another great option, but Vimeo you would have to pay for the account. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, Natasha just said, I see a lot of people use Vimeo too. So Vimeo, the, let's talk about Vimeo and YouTube a little bit. So YouTube is what we suggest because we want to help business owners get found. And YouTube, like I said, is the number two used search engine and the second most visited website. Now, Vimeo is a really great video hosting platform, especially if you are planning on embedding the videos on your website. Whenever you utilize a YouTube embed code, especially as of late, you're always going to see that checkerboard of other options at the end of the video. YouTube's goal is to keep people on YouTube content. And so before, we used to be able to add a code into the embed code to keep it private so that way those checkerboard options would not show up but that is no longer possible. And so if you want to embed videos on your website and have a really clean looking video player without other video suggestions at the end, you may want to consider getting a Vimeo account. Uh, 
All right. So yeah, I know one of my clients, the uh, Cultural Arts Coalition, we actually helped them create a Vimeo account because when they were, they created actually these, uh, the series for educators. So for teachers to show to students and they didn't want to have all the ads or the checkerboard of other videos populating and so for them for that particular course it made sense to have a Vimeo account and so depending on your goals you may want to have a Vimeo account if you're trying to have like that clean looking play uh, player on your website. Mm -hmm. So I hope that kind of explains the difference of Vimeo and YouTube and when you would use one versus the other. Yes, so if you have courses, um, you can use Teachable, um, Udemy, uh, and also Patreon. Patreon can be a really great site if you want to have a membership account or have a um, training series. Because basically Patreon, um, it was created by some YouTube creators who wanted to build more of a membership-like community. And so with Patreon, you can then create different membership levels. So perhaps one level is access to your courses. Um, maybe another level would give them a one-to-one -one with you once a month. And so with that, you can absolutely for free create this, this membership account that then people can choose their tier to be a part of and then also get access to the content. And to share videos to that particular platform, you either utilize a YouTube embed code or link or a Vimeo embed code or link. Once again, depends on how you want that player to look. All right, so other questions. We still just have about 15 minutes left together. Uh, apologies if I talk a little on the fast side. I am a recovering East Coaster, and so we still, uh, I still talk a little fast. <laughs> Marco, too, where are you originally from, Marco? New York City. Oh, Washington? No, New York City. Oh, okay, very cool, awesome. Awesome, awesome. So Teachable, see, I see a comment in here. Teachable is one you were mentioning. So Teachable is a different site. Um, there's Coursera, there's uh, Udemy. So there's different platforms that are created for people who have courses, but you typically have to pay to be on those particular sites. If you wanted to create a course or create a membership opportunity, but not pay to be a part of it, then you may want to look at Patreon. So patreon.com, you for free can create an account and create different membership tiers for people to then purchase and be a part of your membership. Okay, talk a little bit more about the content creation process. Definitely. So I would really suggest that you create a document. I always say use a Google Doc because then that way I can access it on my computer, on my phone, no matter where I am. And whenever you get a question, when someone asks you a question, when you get emailed a question, when you get a question on a phone call, write that question down because that is a question that probably more people are having that is going to be a great video to post to show that you're a subject matter expert as well as help with the search results of that particular topic. And so that's number one. Number two is think about within your industry, what are some common phrases that you are always saying that you think everyone knows, but probably not unless they're in your industry. Although that might not sound like the sexiest of content, it's still really great to produce because that's what people are looking for. And we want people to find us organically and naturally. Also, as I mentioned, that introduction video. If you don't have an introduction video, that should be your number one focus, honestly, because that video is gonna be that first impression that many people could have. You could put that video in your email signature, pin it to the top of your business Facebook page, add it to your LinkedIn profile, um, you know, that add it to the top fold of your website. And when I say top fold, that means when someone enters your website, the first thing that they see before they have to scroll down. The people will stay on a website three times longer when there's a video on that top old than if there wasn't. And so really focus on that introduction video, 
then testimonials and reviews, third-party validation, then look at your industry, look at some of the common phrases or uh, you know, kind of glossary words that you could go over, as well as those common questions that you have. And you're just gonna build onto that list. I know I have, you know, I don't even know how many pages now of ideas that I've done or are going to do because of the questions that I have been asked. And, you know, just like what we always say in school, there's no dumb question. And so there's no dumb content video too. Although it might seem simple and minute to you, it might be profound for someone else. So I hope that helps you think a little bit more. Um, also, kind of along the lines of the content creation is, you know, we we're talking about the grade eight document and utilizing one sentence to answer the questions. So that way, when you put them all together, it's about a minute long. Also, when you're scripting your other videos, and I really do suggest that you script out and write out your, your videos before producing them, because it's going to help get your mind focused on the content, but also will allow you to make sure that you're not going to be rambling too much. That's everyone's number one problem is that they repeat, repeat, repeat. But if you script it out, you organize your thoughts. And then you can try to script your videos to be about 150 words because 150 words is about one minute. And on average, that's your retention rate for people. And so if you wanna try to just get started with creating videos, try to write your videos to be about 150 words. So I hope that helped. Uh, is there a link you recommend for videos for YouTube? You also mentioned having the first 15 to 60 seconds be interesting. Would you recommend this being what you are going to talk about in your video? Great question. So first we wanna think about what platform are we putting the video on? So you said YouTube. For YouTube, it depends on what the topic is. So. If you are having an interview, let's say with some leading expert in your industry, that video could be a half hour long because it could be really interesting content uh, along a topic that people in your target demographic care about. Now, if you're share, if you're trying to sell something, then I would stay within the minute or less because people don't want to be sold to. If you're educating someone how to do something or how to use a product or how to do a particular procedure, take as much time as you need. Just keep it interesting. And so that means if you absolutely need 10 minutes to explain the process, take the full 10 minutes, just make sure you keep your energy up and try to add some, maybe some text graphics to just change the, the eyes a little bit. You want to make sure you keep the viewer's eyes simulated. Add some text graphics to emphasize what you're talking about. Uh, maybe add a couple other camera angles just to switch it up a little bit. And so for YouTube, it's really how long the video needs to be. But you do typically want to stick with this formula. Tell them what you're going to tell them tell them then tell them what you told them so in that first 15 to 60 uh, 15 to 60 seconds you can say in this video you're going to learn how to produce your own video then you go through producing your own video then you remind them so you just simply do xyz and you produce your own video people remember in threes and so that's why you want to tell them you're going to tell them tell them then tell them what you told them and have that call to action. Because once you've empowered someone to, you know, either utilize your product or service, you want to have them go into action right away. So explain how to take action. For LinkedIn, it's going to be um, anything less than 10 minutes. It's actually capped at 10 minutes. So you're looking between a minute to 10 minutes long for LinkedIn. Instagram, once again, just regular Instagram platform, you're looking at 60 seconds. Uh, for IGTV, you can go all the way up to an hour. Um, and then you know, for TikTok, you're looking at 15 seconds, 60 seconds. And for Facebook, so for Facebook, you're gonna notice whenever you upload a video to Facebook that there's this little like checker of, you know, did you do all these things that Facebook recommends when you're uploading a video? One of the checkpoints is gonna be, is your video three minutes or longer? And people will see that and go, oh my gosh, all my videos are supposed to be three minutes long for Facebook. That's not necessarily true. If your video is a quality 60 second video, 30 second video, 
post it and you'll still get some engagement and views, especially if it's really entertaining. The reason why Facebook wants the videos to be at least three minutes long is because those are the videos that on the watch page will get ads put into them. Facebook is a total copycat of, of YouTube. They want to be YouTube. And so you'll notice then that, you know, if YouTube does something, then Facebook will try to do something. And YouTube on longer videos will put, you know, breaks in between with ads. Facebook's trying to do the same thing. And so that's why it's encouraging videos to be three minutes or longer, but it definitely does not have to be. Um, when you create the story, does it have to be loaded in a way that you can crop for a larger video to post a story? So although I'm someone on like, let's save time and leverage things and reuse things, sometimes, especially when it comes to like the stories, you need to think of like, what's a story content or what's a TikTok content versus what's a longer form content. And so typically for stories or, um, or for TikTok, it's just like, what is that little snippet that could be like a teaser to something bigger? And so I wouldn't ever try to produce something that I think is going to work as a story and a regular post. So those, those 15 second stories and, and TikTok things should be kind of their own little separate teaser pieces with large text graphics, always with the large text graphics. And another fun thing I think about TikTok is kind of the use of um, the music. I know throughout my history, people have always asked me to use popular music in their videos, and I will always typically refuse to do it because I don't want them to get flagged by YouTube or flagged by Facebook. I don't want the, you know, I want them to be able to put ads on those videos and to be able to utilize their videos for ads. And you can't do that if you use copyright music. But TikTok is kind of all about having fun with copyright music. And so it just gives you an opportunity to have a little more fun and creativity with that. All right, any other questions? You know, the one topic we really didn't talk too much about, oh, are there places to access free music that you can use on YouTube? So YouTube actually does provide a small um, content creator library on there. Um, so you can utilize some of the music on there. In terms of free, uh, I really don't know too many sites for free, but you can purchase um, licensed music from uh, audioblocks.com is a good one, audiojungle.com, um, artlist.io, and uh, Envato Music. Those are probably the four that I would suggest to look for music. And let's say you don't want to put a huge budget towards music, but some people will do. Um, I believe Audio Jungle is just one where you can just purchase like a track maybe find a track that you can then utilize as kind of your branded track. Yes, and I will put those in the chat right now for you. And so take a look at the different options I'm posting here in the chat and just see which one's gonna make the most sense for you. And like I said, for some people, oh, it's artlist.io. For some people, they'll just find one music track that they absolutely love, and then they'll just stick with that as their branded track. So audiojungle.com, and then let me pull think, the think, actual one. Uh, I always spell Envato wrong, so let me go ahead and pull that up. Yeah, Storyblocks is a good one. Oh, yeah, Audio Jungle. Oh, something else. Did I already put Audio Jungle? Okay, I did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Storyblocks is a good one too because it provides video uh, content, it provides video templates for, mm -hmm. for graphics and effects. You just pay either monthly or yearly fee and you have all this access and it helps, it helps you uh, with editing. So it's good. Yes, yes. So yes, some of these sites like the um, Envato, it's beyond just the music. You know, Audio Jungle, it's just audio. Artlist is just audio. But um, Audio Blocks is connected to Video Blocks. Envato Elements does have other elements in there. And so maybe you need to create a video where it's your voice with just some B-roll footage. So that's just like extra footage to put on top of your voice. 
you could potentially, you know, get all the assets you need other than your story from one of these sites and then you put them together. And in terms of editing, um, if you're brand new to video marketing and are just starting with editing, if you have a um, Apple or Macintosh, then you want to use iMovie. You already have it in there. It's very consumer friendly. It's a matter of click and drag and you can make everything work. Um, if you have a PC, Yes, you do a movie maker on there, but I'm very disappointed with the movie maker system. I would advise if you are new and just looking for something consumer friendly for a PC that you look at Mobavi. Uh, or if you're really serious about doing uh, video editing and video marketing, do the Adobe Creative Cloud. I know that's what we use. It gives you opportunities to use Premiere Pro. You can do After Effects for some more motion graphics. Um, you can then do, you know, green screen work. You have Photoshop on there. So I would suggest that if you want to go big in terms of video marketing. So for Marco, that might make sense. Marco, what do you, what do you use? I use uh, uh, Final Cut and Adobe Premiere. Um, I like Adobe Premiere better. Um, the Final Cut Pro does have its, 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 its pros and cons. Yes, yes. So Final Cut is another purchasable option, which is consumer friendly. But, you know, to Marco's point, um, it's consumer friendly so much that if you know how to edit, it can be a little annoying because sometimes it doesn't allow you to um, do the customization that you'd want to do that you can do inside of Premiere. And so that's definitely if you're stepping up that game in video marketing and video editing that you'd want to consider that. But if you're just starting, I would go iMovie or Movavi. And I put a link in there for Mavabi if anyone was interested in that. All right, everyone. Well, we are just about to be closing here. Um, Elizabeth, if she hasn't already, is just going to post a small poll, if you don't mind uh, just completing that poll. We really, really appreciate it. And if you have any other questions, you know, I'm just going to hang on the line here for another minute or two, and I can answer any additional questions you may have. But really, the goal here is that I want everyone to walk away with just some actual steps of, of what you can do in order to utilize video marketing in your business, because it really does not matter what business you're in, you absolutely should be communicating through video because it's a way to clone your message in a retentive way because people will retain about 60% of the information given in a video comparative to only 20% when read and 30% when heard. And all social media algorithms favor video because they know that people are attracted to video. And it actually is favored in this order, alive. So if you're brave enough, Go live because you're going to get way more impressions and way more interactions. So there's live and then there is going an actual video and then photos. And so no more just posting the written word if possible. Make sure to add a video in there. Yes, definitely, Marco. Let's stay in touch. I would love to do that. Um, always great to connect with uh, fellow creatives as yourselves. And really, everyone, I'd love everyone to stay in touch with. Um, so please, if you haven't, feel free to put your contact information in there. Um, stay connected. Whomever you did your uh, great eight with, make sure you stay connected with them as well. And maybe you know work with each other to really fully develop that great eight. Okay. Well, thank you all for attending today. I really, really do appreciate all of your time. Um, and, you know, I'm going to put my contact information in here. Once again, we do provide a complimentary strategy session. Uh, I don't think I actually mentioned that, but we do provide a complimentary strategy session. And so if you want to schedule uh, a meeting with me, I would love to do that. We'll talk about you, your business, your needs, and how video marketing can help you reach those goals. You can just utilize that calendar link in order to get scheduled. And then we also provide the complimentary YouTube audit. And so if you have a YouTube channel and you want to review to see if if you have it set up to be search engine optimized, we will let you know. <laughs> and with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and hope to see you all again soon.